this image here is actually one of my all-time favorites. I, I'm not really sure why. Um, it's just a couple of really big trees. Uh, but what I, I, what I really like about this is the soft light. And I really love this type of lighting. It's, um, it's all, my all-time favorite. If I could get light like, like this all the time, then I would, I would just be happy <laughs> just, just photographing this light all the time. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen that often. It's more or less, it is foggy, but it's a really light fog where you have uh, direct sunlight coming in every now and then, where you have directional light that kind of creates a bit of texture. Now, this particular image doesn't do that, but this photograph here, again, uh, this is really soft light without the fog. But as you can see, there is directional light. So that's what's giving it uh, all of its texture and depth. And in most cases, that's what you're looking for in your photography is to create some kind of depth. Because it's such a flat plane that you're looking at uh, after the fact that, you know, you need some way to draw people in and, and create that depth. Um, just as a side note, this particular tree here, I don't know what's happening with it. This is actually a Douglas fir that's got some kind of disease or something and it's just gone all kind of usually they don't grow like this the trees surrounding this one are what it should look like but uh, it's such an interesting old tree it's um so gnarly and a gnarly gnarly looking tree it's uh, pretty cool just a comment on uh, the last couple of images that we've seen um a lot of them are of big trees which you tend to place center of your composition uh, number yes. one number two you never really see the tops of a lot of the trees you take. And obviously, it's because you're close, but uh, I think a lot of people may see a forest and think, oh, I need to stand back and get the tree in. But you seem to take out kind of a vignette of them, is it? Yes. Well, what I, what I found with my own tree photography, I very rarely use a, um, a wide-angle lens. I, I try to back up as much as, as possible. Of course, that's not possible in a lot of cases because you, you've got too many trees to back up. Um, one of the things that really bugs me about forest photography, this is just a personal thing, are these areas here where we get white sky coming in through the frame. Yep. Because uh, as soon as you get those in, they start to really detract from the overall image. And the only way you can really get rid of those is by just backing up a little bit and using a slightly longer uh, lens. And that's what I do. I, I Most of my images aren't of the whole tree yeah. just the bottom sections for sure and, and then do you choose to put the tree in the center is that a specific decision you make that's that's just a composition a compositional thing that i personally like mm. um it i mean some people might look at them and say well it's a little stagnant uh but for me it just it just creates a really nice balance not always but a lot of time like putting it onto one side on, on, a, on a, say you're doing, following, um, I don't know, the rule of thirds where you have it on an intersectional line, or, you know, either one side or the other. It doesn't, it doesn't work for me because you always have the empty space on one side or the other. So I just plonk it right in the middle. And for my eye, it works quite well. Particularly um, with a sort of a wider screen format like you have here. Yes, like this one here, it works quite well because the tree isn't really symmetrical. We have because we have one branch that reaches out over to the to the right side, and then this branch here kind of goes up. So it's it's not really a symmetrical image. I mean, I guess I could crop it a little bit on the on the left side a little bit, and it'd probably still work. Uh, um, it just that. I don't just it just felt right to me. Yep. <clears throat> And this, this photograph here, um, I don't know if Bob's watching, but this, this image remind because um, Alistair Ben and I just did a, a, an image uh, kind of critique. And this light reminded me very much of an image that um, one of the participants showed us, Bob from Florida. Uh, I mean, the light is exact, exactly the same. So it's, it's quite uncanny, really. What I, what I really love about this type of light is that you'll notice that we have uh, the conditions are very foggy, but uh, we have directional light as well in the foreground. And the directional light is actually coming from the right-hand side here. So we have a clearing in the forest so that the sun is able to penetrate that clearing and create this, this uh, light on the side of, the, of these trees. And what's also important uh, is that 
the fog in the background is quite cool. So cool colors tend to uh, recede and warmer colors tend to uh, move everything forward. So it adds another dimension of, um, of depth. And again, that's what you're looking for with light is to create some kind of illusion or uh, of just creating depth in your, in your images, whether you put it in manually through post-processing or just finding natural light like this, where it, it just happens naturally. And it's just something to keep aware of because just remember that what you see in front of you doesn't necessarily always translate in, in your camera. Sometimes you have to work at it a little bit to um, bring those nuances forward.